Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, apologies for the slight faux pas on the delay here. Some tech issues. I may not press the go live button here, but we've got that rectified. For those of you coming back onto your listen on the replay, um, enjoy it. We're talking about how you navigate those financial choppy waters and how you navigate through those calmer waters as well. And it's all about the cash. Now, in terms of cash, the advice I've always given businesses, whatever shape, form they are, whether you work in the private sector, whether you work in the social enterprise sector, if you get a handle on cash, you know which, which direction it's going, you've got access to that, you can pretty much survive most things here. In terms of uh, just a bit of housekeeping before we go through what we're going to be talking about today here. So if you guys want to sort of dive in, add some comments, ask questions, fire them in. If we don't actually cover them all during the broadcast itself, I'm certainly going to make sure that I cover them all and address them all when you leave them. Come back. Uh, you can listen to this on replay. So those of you coming back in on replay, hope your week's gone well. Hope you enjoy what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to share with you three main things, three main talking points today. So that's the approach. So how do we actually approach and think about, you know, constructing the cash story for our business? First key thing. Number two, probably which probably daunts a lot of people, how do I actually physically build that story up here? Now, I'm going to show you a framework. I'm going to share some tips with you. And at the end of the broadcast here, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of freebies here uh, that I'm going to share with you, which takes the heavy lifting out and saves your brain from getting overloaded with calculations. So we've got something here that's going to help you with that heavy lifting and some reading material, a nice, wonderful guys that my team have helped me put together that I'm happy to share with you out there. The third dimension, so we've got the approach, we've got the actual building, getting our hands dirty, diving in deep, putting all those numbers together. And then for me, where the real power, where the real energy comes, where the real confidence to navigate your business ship is once you've got your numbers in front of you, it's decision time. And there are lots of decisions that we can look at, options, it gives you power, it gives you confidence, it gives you the energy that you can take and actually navigate your business going forward. We are, as the uh, session goes on, just to illustrate, as uh, so you just don't have somebody just talking at you and interacting on the comments, I'm gonna share some slides and overview, some nice visuals. Any creative people out there, uh, forgive me, obviously if it's not perfect, and also going to show some numbers at the end. So if you like the show, which hopefully you do, I'd love it if you could share it, get that message out there. There'd be lots of people here that I think could really use with the information that we're talking about today. So love it if you could share. And now let's get on with the show. Now let me do my technology bit, share my screen. Bang, that goes in there. And let's crack on. So for me, as we said, cash is the name of the game. And that doesn't matter, by the way, whatever the state of your business is, whatever the state of the landscape is, you know, cash should always be one thing that you keep a careful eye on. Now, in the beginning, I think the approach to doing this is really going to be quite critical here. Uh, lots of people might quite naturally think, OK, I'm going to be scared by what the numbers are going to tell me. I think things are quite perilous. You know, I'm not quite sure which way my business is going. You might be very optimistic in your business and think this is how I want to drive it. Make sure you've got the right approach. And I would strongly suggest do not draw conclusions about what's going to happen to your business until you've actually put the figures together. You've got the story. You've taken a step back and then you can actually look at what's going on here. Some people quite naturally will be thinking, well, I'm going to make my story think what I think is happening with the money that I've got available. First of all, approach it with a positivity. Come out from under that duvet. Don't adopt that ostrich stance here and grab those numbers by the scruff of the neck. Grab the whole exercise by the scruff of the neck and do it bit by bit and you can do this. The second thing I would strongly urge at the beginning is, is not numbers first, it's your story first. So depending where you are in your business cycle, you'll, have, you'll be aware of what's going on. You'll be aware of what the future might hold. And you may have an idea that whether you're pivoting, whether you're going to continue, whether you've changed your business model here, how do you envisage things rolling out over the next three to six months? My tip, my ideal aspiration is to produce your story over a 12 month cycle. So what do you think is going to happen to your business? How do you want to take your business? Where are you going to take it over the next 12 months? If you find that's too difficult for you, 
and it's a bit too challenging to begin with. You know, nobody can predict what's going to happen in a couple of weeks' time, so a year might be a bit ambitious. I would certainly suggest that you set the dial for three to six months. Now, what I mean by business story is, who are the customers that you're going to be serving? How are you going to be promoting your business there as well? And this can be back and forth. What's your target market? What's the product and services that you're selling in? What's the capacity that you've got? Now, if you don't actually know that definitive story, I promise you, everybody, that once you've built your cash story, then you can come back and you can shape and you can refine that story. Anybody who's written a blog or written a book knows that you can do a draft. You go back with a carving knife and you tighten things up. You change perhaps what some of the characters are doing. You might actually shorten and extend some paragraphs. It's the same with your business story. It will be reshaped. It's a, an iterative process. Once you've got your story straight-ish, then overlay the numbers at the end. The numbers don't come first. The numbers come second. And the numbers reflect what's going on in your business. Now, beautiful thing about, for me, about any form of plan, any form of story, and I'm a big fan of planning. I think it cuts down a lot of risk. It makes sure that you're, it minimizes your likelihood of getting your fingers burned. Your story can represent the, method, the weather map for your business. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's just have a pause. Now, by weather map, you may, in your own particular business, and remember your story is unique to you, is not replicating what everybody else is, what everybody else is experiencing. So your weather may be very turbulent, may be very choppy for the next few weeks, few months. Your story reflects that situation. It might be calm, it might be bright sunshine, it might be a small drop of rain, and you can adapt your story to reflect those circumstances. And finance people, by the way, use this very strange thing, they call it sensitivity. So you can adapt the story to reflect the weather conditions that your business is going to be experiencing. The next thing I would probably then approach is the issues and the numbers. So there are four key things that you need to think about. Now, this is even before, by the way, you get stuck in adding up numbers, calculating numbers. And as I said earlier on, there's going to be some resources that we can share that takes that heavy weight lifting out of the game. You need to think about effectively two key numbers, cash coming in, and by cash, I'm referring to the money that hits your bank account. So we're not talking about, I sell a product today, and the customer pays me in two months time. We're not talking about the time you make the sale. We're talking about when do you get your hands on that cold hard cash. So think about the cash that comes in to your business. Typically, it will be from what you're selling. Typically, it might be some of your own funds. It may be money that you're borrowing by way of loans. It may be grants. It may be items that you're selling off. You know, a whole combination. Where does that cash actually come from? And at this early stage, I would probably just concentrate on describing the sources of that cash before we even get involved in the actual numbers that are involved. So just write like a shopping list. Where's the cash coming from? Now, the other side of the coin, probably the one that's more easy to put together, is where does the cash go? Typically, it's things like paying suppliers, buying goods and services, paying for marketing activities, obviously paying yourself. Don't leave yourself out of the equation. You need to receive cash out of the business to support yourself and your family. So think about where does the cash actually go? And remember, by cash, we're talking about visualize your bank statement, and it's the cash that comes in and out of that uh, device. Time scale. So are you doing this over a three month window? Are you doing this over a six month cycle? Or are you doing this over a 12 month cycle? You decide, I would certainly suggest, uh, my personal view would be three to six months is the minimum time period that you're looking at. And then thereafter, try and build it up for over a year. Now the reason I say three to six months, Three months might be something you're coping with in the more immediate here, but things will calm, things will get more volatile, things change throughout the year. You may have elements of what I call seasonality, that typically your business peaks at a particular time of year, and it might be times of the year that it's relatively quiet. So for those of you, for example, involved in the service business, you may find your services diminish, depending on what they are, in the summertime, and you may find that services and products 
increase around about Christmas time. So time scale, what, over what period? My advice would be typically three to six months minimum to ideally a 12 month cycle. Now the timings, let's think about what I referred to earlier on. So if I've got a business and I'm selling things in, what would typically happen is, is when I sell something, then I've got to think about when does the customer actually pay for that? So let's just put a little banner heading up there. So let's assume you're in a situation that you're selling something, goods or services. You sell those goods or services today. In an ideal universe, all of us would like to get the cash straight away. I mean, who wouldn't want to be paid immediately for something they provided? Uh, if we go shopping in the supermarket, the supermarket's not going to say, come back in 30 days' time, 60 days' time, and pay me. They get the cash up front, which is you know, a great, wonderful way of doing it. A lot of us, though, are involved in businesses where, for whatever reason, it's quite normal, perhaps. It's quite typical that we sell something, and then we give the customer time to pay. So what we need to think about, then, is ultimately, when do we get that money from that particular customer? And when do we actually pay for our supply? So it works two ways, ladies and gentlemen. If I use a freelancer in my business, then they might invoice me today. I might agree with them that I pay their bill at the end of the month or the following month. So think about your customers, think about your suppliers, and critically, think about the gap between when you've got the bill and when that money has to leave your account. And the cash flow is really concerned on timing. It's basically cold, hard cash in, cold, hard cash going out, and effectively, when does it happen? Let's just grab a sip of water. Let's digest that. Again, for those of you coming on catch up, watching the replay, um, we're talking about navigating choppy and calm financial waters. For me, the way we do that is to get a handle on the cash that comes in and out of the business. We're talking about the approach to building this story. We're talking about the actual physical construction that get down and dirty, put those numbers together. And then we're talking about, for me, where the power comes in is about using what those numbers are telling us. And those numbers, by the way, are gonna be your best friend in your business. They won't lie to you, and they'll actually give you the insight and the confidence to actually drive your business forward. Now, by the power of magic, third index comes up. Now, from a finance point of view and a numbers point of view, by the way, I'm not a big fan of boring people with jargon and language. I'm gonna choose a couple of terms here. Now, this is in terms of the money, the cash that leaves your business. And I would strongly urge you to think of it in terms of category. So if you've got a piece of paper or your computer or your iPad or whatever, and you're scribbling down lots of things, get some degree of what I call order and put these things into, into like visual buckets as such. So some of your outgoing, some of your cash leaving your business will be what I call fixed. So that means if you've got no customers whatsoever, if the activity on that business is zero, zilch, absolutely nothing at all, there will still be some commitments that you've got to make in your business. So if you've got an office premise, you may find that the landlord will not give you a rent holiday if things are a bit tricky. So you've still got a commitment to pay out rent. You may also have subscriptions that you've got out. You may also have you know, professional services like uh, ourselves or somebody else here, and you've got a commitment to keep paying those resources. So those costs and commitments that are fixed, make sure you bracket them, make sure you mark them out somewhere, because whatever happens, those costs will still go out. Now, some of those costs that you have, some of those payments going out of your business are fluctuating. So if you have no business going on, those costs will not occur. If you have an activity going on in the business that doesn't occur, these costs will disappear. Let me draw an example for you here, everybody. So if you imagine if you're a car driver, now the activity of your car is the distance that you're traveling uh, where you're taking that vehicle. Now, if you don't use the car at all, you still have car tax, car insurance to be obligated to pay out. 
Once you start using that vehicle, though, then you've got petrol and fuel costs that need to be incurred. Those are what I call the variable costs. Typically, if you're a retailer, you're selling things, then your cost for you, the payments out, will be the cost of buying in those products from your suppliers. If you make the things, it will be the cost of production. If you've got associates that you use to deliver a service, then every time you deliver maybe a workshop, a day's worth of activity, you've got to pay out for maybe designers, graphic artists, some marketing costs. So those costs are variable. Link those closely, because when we build these models, it's easy to link those as well. Now, if you're sitting there thinking this is fantastic here, and actually, where can I find out more information? We have got, uh, our, as the end of the broadcast on there as well, our, on the website itself, we've got tons of information, resources here. So we've got uh, a podcast that's published every week that covers these themes. Uh, we've got uh, resources on there in terms of articles here. So there's lots of stuff that you can access here if you want to get a bit more depth and background to these things that we're talking in terms of. If it has no interest to you whatsoever, that's great, that's fine, but you're still fine that you, in your business, you still need to have some appreciation of what's going on. Now, the other way that I would look at this also, with those same numbers, I would then actually break them down into two groups. There are those payments that are associated with the delivery of your product or service. So typically, if we take the retailer, the retailer, some of those direct costs would be the cost of buying in the product. If you are running a service type business, then it may be that you've got freelancers, you've got a wage bill, and those are particularly for the delivery of the service. It's what I would call direct. Everything else is supporting the business. So if we imagine in a bigger uh, scheme of things, if we take hospitals, for example, the payments for a hospital, the direct payments, would be the doctors and the nurses. The supporting activities by which the hospital could not function would be the x-ray department, the pathology, the cleaners, the ancillary staff. Airline companies, same idea. The direct payments would be, for example, would be cabin crew, the pilots. The support team would be check-in, would be the ones who clean the airports, uh, maintain the aircraft. So however you've got that, you've got two brackets there. Some people use the word overheads, by the way, if that's what's more natural for you to use that, I prefer the visualization of support costs. So what we're doing at the moment, we're figuring out what's going on, we're labeling them up, we're getting a handle on what's occurring in the business. Now let's move into our last couple of bits here. Now the outcome. Once we've identified what's going on in your story, how you see your business developing, you now what's your mini three to six month plan? We can then overlay the numbers at the end of it. And for our cash model, it's fundamentally thinking in terms of cash coming in, cash going out, over what period of time are we going to be looking at the future, and when does it actually happen? We're looking at the payments that are constant, they're fixed, doesn't matter what we do, those costs that fluctuate, and ideally, we're going to group them into those that are involved with the delivery and the production of the products, delivery of the service, and those costs that support it. We're now going to look at the outcome of all this. And again, don't over worry everybody about, oh my God, I've got to build this. I'm going to use the word spreadsheets. However you do that, scraps of paper. We're going to give you those tools to do that. You need to focus, it's your business. You need to focus on the process and trying to gather that data. And please, at this stage, do not worry if you're thinking, I've got no idea what those numbers are, no idea what the shape is, hold your nerve, get to the end of the story, and I'll show you in a few moments about how you're going to use those numbers. And you might shape the story differently. You might go back and decide to change things. You might be more ambitious. You might cut down the ambition. Ultimately, we're going to show the outcome of all that, that activity. So we're going to show cash in, less cash out. We're going to factor in how much cash, if anything, we begin with. We're going to then figure out how much cash we've got left over on a typically on a month by month basis. And then it's liberation time, it's decisions, decisions we can make to decide what we're going to do with our business.
And these are the decisions typically that you can make. Now, these will make more sense in a few moments, by the way. I've just put together uh, a few little numbers here to illustrate. So when you look at the result of your cash future, decisions you will make will involve, you can either delay payments, for example, or cancel them ultimately altogether. Decisions that you make have got to be linked to the commercial reality, though. So if you decide to cut out costs in times when times are volatile, people take a carving knife and say, cut this, cut this, cut that. Well, if that's going to have a detriment to your business going forward, you're going to think carefully about them. And a couple of examples that spring to mind, when things are quite tricky for businesses, the natural instinct is to cut back on marketing, to cut back on training costs, to cut back on, you know, maybe professional services as well thinking those are unnecessary and, and that would, it's a perfectly natural reaction but it's not necessarily the most sensible reaction either because those businesses that continue to market their products and services those businesses that continue to invest and those businesses that continue to have the right sort of professional services will be much stronger and when things become different you're in a much stronger position to go forward on that as well you can challenge these things. And remember, the delay or cancellation happens to new services you're delivering as well. Challenge them. For me, when you see numbers, challenge them is not like a boxing match or anything. It's saying, does that commitment, does that cost, does that resource, does that investment, whatever you want to call it, what does it do to my business? Does it enhance it? Does it add value to the customer experience? Does it make my life easier? Now, I'm, I wouldn't say lazy by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm a big fan of technology. And then sometimes when you look at tasks that you're repeating and you're doing, if you think about how much time it's taking up, you might be thinking, actually, there's a device out there, there's an app out there, there's something I can invest in, which cuts down the amount of time that I'm spending and it liberates my ability to do something else. So have a think about the impact internally, have a think about the impact externally, but challenge them. If they're unnecessary, don't actually add any value to the business, to your customer experience, then by all means, reduce them. Challenge your assumptions as well. Now, other things, a couple of things to also factor in, your business model. So when we look at the cash that we've got left with our business, that's the thing that's going to determine whether we can survive or not, you might want to look at your business model. So if you're a business that gives credit terms to customers and you say, I will give you 30 days to pay, some customers may not pay within 30 days. Your business model may change and saying, actually, I'll say 50% up front, the rest I'll wait for. Your business model could be, you've got pricing, which I'm going to deal with in a future broadcast. And you might say, actually, my headline price is this. Actually, I'm going to consider perhaps altering the strategy. I might want to cut the price to the customer. What that will mean is I potentially either maintain the sales base or I generate more business which gives me the opportunity to sell other things in there as well. So you might want to tweak your business model to make sure you've got a good, robust, viable cash story. Now, for me, the last ditch decision is funding. And funding typically means is if you've got a very challenging cash time coming ahead of you, you may decide to actually let me look at overdraft facilities, perhaps short term. I might look to inject my own funds if I have any. I might look to borrow that. For me, in terms of the funding decision, certainly that's true. Certainly you need to factor it in. You know, overdrafts, if you've got overdraft facilities, that will get you through a short-term period. Some people I know don't particularly like debt. Some people don't like particularly borrowing money. It's an option, nevertheless, but I would probably look at that as one of the last things to consider. And it might be a blend of all of those things that come into, into play. Delay, cancel, challenge the cost, change the business model, get some funding. All of those is going to be perhaps a natural outcome of your cash model. Now, just by the power of technology, what I'm going to show you now, ladies and gentlemen, um, is what the story might look like. Now, this is just a visual, by the way. How you do your own models, if you've got your own models that you use, plug them in, fantastic. If you haven't got something, I'll share something with you. I'll share you a guide. I'll share you a story about how you put those figures together. For those of you coming in onto replay, uh, 
And we're talking about a cash story, how we construct it. We're talking about the uh, approach. We're talking about the construction, the building of it. And we're talking about the use of it. Now, this is what the outcome of the story will be. So I'll summarize into five key elements. Number one, we're talking about the cash that comes into the business. So we're thinking about where does it come from? So typically it's selling things, it's providing services, it could be money that you're borrowing, it could be grants that you're getting, it could be your own funds. You've then got the cash that leaves the business. Typically that will be for, for uh, running the co running costs of the business. It'll be for salary staffs, it'll be for rental costs, it'll be for products that you're buying in to sell on again. It could be equipment, it could be paying off loans, paying off debt, money that you pay to yourself. We don't really care. If it's cash that impacts your bank statement, it goes under this bracket. Now, the difference between the top two, the in and the out, is how much cash or not you've got for that particular time period. You then got how much cash you start with and how much cash you end with. Now, I know you're all getting excited. Let's have a look at what it feels like and shows like in numbers. So as a result of me going through this cash story, I've got my business story, my sort of mini business plan, what's my aspiration, what's my ambition. I've figured out what they are by descriptions, I've sorted out the cash coming in, the sources and the outgoings, and I've decided in this example, I'm only gonna look ahead three months. The principle will be exactly the same if you extend it, so we have as follows. So based on my mental agility, based on what I've figured out, based on what I've surmised, I calculated that the cash that comes into the business is a total of £4,000. For those of you, again, who may not be UK based, uh, welcome, uh, one and all. This is a story that's applicable to wherever you are in the world. Uh, I've worked and been fortunate enough to work internationally, big companies, small companies, micro companies, charities, social enterprise. You know, I've had a very good career here and the story is exactly the same. There's one truism Wherever you are in the world, you run out of cash, everybody. Show's over, close the lights, on your way out, you will not survive. You can survive if you've got access to cash. You can survive if you've got cash resources. If you don't have that pipeline, it's all over. You can survive without making profits, believe it or not. So many big companies do not make profits in the early stages. Tricky times might be more difficult, but cash is the one thing that will not lie to you. One out of cash, it's all over. So in this story, the £4,000 could be 4000 whatever your unit of currency is. It could be dollars. Uh, I'm not going to run through all the currencies in the world. You know what they are. The cash leaving the business is 3600 Notice, by the way, I'll put that in brackets. Finance and numbers people typically put things into brackets if it's bad news. So that's cash in, four, cash out, three, six. That means there's a cash flow in that particular month of £400 surplus. Fantastic. At the beginning of April, I had £1,000 already in the account. Again, it doesn't really matter whether it's zero, it's a principle is. So that means at the end of April, I've got a £1,400 cash pile building up. Brilliant. Let's move forward now to see what the month of May presents. Now, as I move into May, that's when the bite starts happening, perhaps, and my cash coming in, and it could be because of the environment I'm working in. It could be, naturally, seasonality. So May may be a time for my business where I don't actually sell a lot anyhow. It could be I'm regrouping, launching a new product, and therefore I expect very low levels of sales. Whatever the reason is, I've come up with a figure of saying £1,200 in the month of May. In that same month, some of the costs have gone down. I've shrunk them to 2800 Remember what we were saying earlier on. I've taken my carving knife out a little bit. I've challenged some of the costs. Some of the costs are, are variable. So if I've got less business, some of those costs and cash will come down. You know, a number of reasons why that cash is lower in the month of May. The difference between those two figures here, he says, obviously hoping the numbers work out, is a deficit now of 1,600 pounds. So I've spent more cash in that month than I had coming in. Now, what that means is I started the month with £1,400 in the cash pile. I now ended up with a £200 deficit of cash, brackets overdrawn at the end of May. Now, remember, don't even start panicking and thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? 
get to the end of the story, sit back, and then we can talk, summarize the action points. So don't start editing as you go through. Come up with the first cut, and you may be doing this several times until it works. Now, by the time we get to June, the situation has deteriorated due to a combination of the circumstances you find yourself in, as well as the seasonality, as well as your business story. So the month of June, 1,600 pounds comes in, 2,400 goes out. That's a shortfall of 800 pounds. I started the month overdrawn, effectively of 200 pounds. So I end up with a cash deficit of 1,000 pounds by the end of June. What do we do? Well, we take a pause, we take a step back, we go and grab a sandwich, we grab a, a glass of something, in my case it's going to be a glass of water, and we look at it and we think to ourselves, so what now? Options come to us. Is it possible that we might want to arrange overdraft facilities? So is our, our banks cool guys? Will they let us have that overdraft facility? If so, great, that will take us through. If the bank say, I'm sorry, but no overdraft facility, or it can't go over, say, 200 pounds, then we've got to try and do things in the month of June. So can we revisit those uh, cash payments? Can we do anything to have all the expenditures in there that aren't actually critical and necessary? You may be looking to buy equipment. Can you delay the buying of that equipment till later on? Can you challenge some of those costs? And remember, you want a sensible story. So if you cut back on marketing, for example, that's going to have an effect on how much you're going to sell on the top line. But revisit, can you do things about the cash coming in? So you've got a price for your commodity, your product and service. If you play around with it, if you reduce the price, does that mean you can sell more? So those conversations you have with yourself, your business partners, your team, okay, will come around once you see what the first cut of numbers are. The conversations that you have with your team and yourself. So if you have marketing people, if you've got HR people, if it's just yourself, obviously a dialogue with yourself is going to be cool, but you need to understand and think, right, I need to revisit the story and see what that's going to look like as a result. So don't bury your head under the sand. Don't go back under that duvet. Get the first cut done, and then it's you've got a number of options to go through. Now, I'm going to wrap up here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to sort of introduce a couple of the a, a snapshot, of one of the freebies I referred to earlier on. So just excuse me for a second. Now, what I've got here in front of you, I don't know if you can see that, there's a model I'm going to share with you, make available. Now, my team have worked tremendously hard on this. They've put this together. Um, I've done my bit from a user's point of view, but we've had a, 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 one of my team, a guy called Ash Raman, who might be uh, on here at the moment, who spent a lot of time and energy and contributed to producing this here. This is the output. This is what it looks like. At the bottom, I'm not going to go through the details on how you construct it. We're going to make this available for Tuesday. Uh, we've got a few techie things to do in the background here. So if you're interested in accessing this, by all means, leave your uh, details at the bottom. If you're part of our family already, <coughs> pardon me, we'll make this available to you anyhow. So if you look at the top, it shows visually what the outcome of this made up here. This is my fictional uh, organization I've created. And at the bottom, you can clearly see in a visual what the overall result will be over uh, that 12 month period. We can also see what the impact on cash flow is. So we can see the deficits occurring that month. We can see the summary of the dashboard here. And the key thing is, this will do the heavy lifting for you. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today. If you've got any comments, please bang them on there. I'll answer them, uh, if not, well, I'll answer them in due course pretty quickly. If you've got some value out of this broadcast, which I hope you have done, I'd love it if you could share it, let other people in on the wonderful news that we're sharing. Good luck with this. I'll give you some more updates later on and have a beautiful, enjoyable Saturday. So for those of you watching on replay, there's some great content here. Share it away. Thank you very much for your lending me your ears. And it's wrap up time. So goodbye. God bless. Let me stop sharing the screen. So you've just got my ugly mug coming back on. That goes there.
perfect. And it goes for a minute to say, have a great Saturday.